When you paint hair, you probably don't want it to look like this, right? So let's see five secrets that you need to know if you want to paint hair. So the first thing to know about painting hair is that you have to make a decision. You have to make a decision between a big brush approach or hyper realism and details. Well, the thing is that when you paint, you're probably using some of these brushes and they don't really fit the nature of hair, which is very fine and very tiny. So basically you have two options. You can choose to paint hair like it's paint or you can choose a hyper realistic approach and you really paint hair like it's actual hair. If you choose the first approach, it's counterintuitive, but you're actually going to use the largest brushes you can find. And you're not trying to really go into details, but you're trying to paint the larger masses. You're trying to give the overall impression of the movement of the hair, the dynamic of the hair. And for that, it's actually better to use large brushes. Try to find a brush that's really big and awkward and, and try to make it work, but not in terms of the actual shape of the brush, but more the movement and what you can do with the brush. You can probably use it on the side. You can probably create some effects with your brush that will help you convey a sense of energy, a sense of dynamism in the hair and you're not really focused on painting hairs individually. Now the other approach, if you have more time and if you have the energy, is to go for a very hyper realistic approach and with this one you want to use very very tiny brushes. And this approach, I mean you have to be committed because you're going to spend a lot of time. We have millions of hairs so you are going to paint them individually. Uh, that's a pain, but if it's what you want, well, go for it. But you have to know that with this level of detail, you're really going into hyper-realism. And there's an area in between, between hyper-realism and, and big brushes. And in this area is actually this, and you, you want to avoid this. So. My advice and my suggestion is to use the biggest brushes you can find and, um, and try to make the best hair as possible with the big brushes because uh, it's more about the values, about the movement, about the energy, about controlling the colors, controlling the transitions. And it's not really about painting every hair individually unless it's your point and in that case, go for it. So the next secret is to visualize the volume of the skull. This is my buddy Albert and he's going to make the demonstration with us. So as you can see, of course, the top of the skull receives more light than the bottom of the skull. And if you have hair on this, the, the top part of the hair is going to receive more light than the bottom part. So you have to take that in consideration when painting the hair. You have to visualize exactly where is the light source and, and how is the, the shape of the skull indicated by the volume of the hair. Generally, top parts receive more light, but if the light is coming from behind or from the side, it can change. So you have to visualize the, the relative values of the hair in general with the light source and the volume of the skull. The third secret is to visualize the volume of the hair strands. Basically, the hair doesn't just convey the volume of the skull, but the, the strands also have some volume. And to visualize this, I recommend using ribbons. Basically, ribbons work just like hair strands. With a ribbon, you can visualize much better how the strands of hair reflect light differently depending on how they curl. So always think about ribbons and do not think about a string mop because this is not a good representation of hair, but this is. 
Now the fourth secret is to visualize the shine and the texture of the hair because it's going to change everything. Look at this. This is glossy and this is matte. And you can see how the, the surfaces, they don't reflect light the same way. And it's exactly the same for hair. Imagine that these are just hair. This one is matte and this one is glossy and shiny. You can see how it reflects light in a specular way, whereas this one reflects light in a more, much more diffuse way. And this is going to affect the way you want to paint um, the person's hair. And it depends on each person. I don't have very, very shiny hair. This is why you don't see bright highlights. I, I do have white hair though, so I'm getting old, but that's a different subject. The hair just works like any other surface. Matte and glossy change the way the surface reflects the light. The more glossy the hair, the more you will see highlights, strong highlights, very bright highlights, almost like a mirror for the light source. If the hair is very fuzzy, if it's very matte, if it's dry, you will have a lot less reflection. So the highlights will be much closer to the local color and you will have less difference between highlights and shadows. If the hair is very shiny, very glossy, you will have a lot of difference between the highlights, so the lightest parts, and the, the, the shadows, the darkest parts. And this property of surface and texture is actually the most crucial thing you can do for hair. The hue of the hair itself is not really important. It doesn't really matter because like people can dye their hair blue or green and you can still see and recognize that this is hair. What really matters is how you you control the values to convey a realistic impression of the texture. And this impression of texture is going to be much more important than, than the hue. Uh, talking about the hue, there are no specific pigments or colors for painting hair. It just requires different types of mixing, but you can use the same types of colors that you would use for the skin. That's very simple, nothing to worry about really. And secret number five, you have to really pay attention to the transition between the hair and the skin. This is a super important element that will avoid to have a sort of helmet look like to feel like the hair is just put on the on the skull without a, a clear transition. It's going to look like a wig that really stops abruptly the hair doesn't behave like this. There's all types of soft transitions. You have lots of things happening in these crucial areas between forehead and the hair. And you really want to focus on these. If you have to focus on specific parts of the hair, these are the areas you should focus on. What you want to do is represent the shadows, the shadows of the hair. You want to represent the area where the hair implantation is lighter and you, do, you see both skin and hair. And you also want to represent and give an idea that there are like, you know, these tiny, tiny hairs that are just in the beginning of the transition. So you really want to work on this and create a soft transition. The softer, the better. Even if, it, if you have to make it softer than it actually appears, it's going to make the painting look more realistic in general. Try to really focus on the shadows. Is the hair creating a shadow on the forehead? You have to think about this. And if it is, you have to paint this. Otherwise, it's going to look like the hair is a different part from the rest of the head. Now, if you want to learn more about oil painting, as always, you can check out my oil painting course where you learn all about the techniques and you have a portrait demonstration where I show all these techniques in great detail. If you want, you can also have a look at my Patreon. There you can not only support my work, but you can also learn a lot about oil painting. For instance, I'm gonna put the real-time version of this video on my Patreon and only for my patrons. So far the community has been amazing and uh, again thank you to all my patrons for your awesome support. It 
really means a lot to me. All right, that's it for this episode. Don't hesitate to like, subscribe, and comment below what you would want to see in the future. And uh, I'll see you for the next episode. Until then, have fun painting. Bye.